Hey, what's going on guys? I'm going to show you how you can create a leveling system in Roblox Studio that you can add to any game. It will also come with a data store so everything gets saved. Everything is included. I will just quickly do a showcase to show you what it would look like. So you'd have uh, your level uh, as a text label and then this is your XP bar. Now, obviously I'm, I'm at zero right now. So I've got three blocks here. They give different XP amounts. And there's also a leader stats here which shows you uh, current XP, maximum XP and your level. You can disable this if you want, but this is just to show you. So this one gives, I believe seven XP. So you can see I got seven XP. So I reached the five maximum and it gave me two extra. So it also includes like the excess XP and moves it on. So you can use this for any game and it works it's great. So this one gives seven, see? And this is the bar you can see, there we go. Level goes up, the bar goes up to match it. I think this one gives 14. There you go, you saw that. And the requirement for how much XP you need increases every single level. See, uh, I think this one gives like 30, yeah. So yeah, and to show the data saves, I will just restart it. Boom, still level 14, still have the current XP, maximum XP, bar loads and everything. Yeah, I'll show you how you do it now. Also, if you do want to just get the whole thing, I will leave it in the description. So you can go and get it there, or you can just follow the, follow the tutorial. Now, you will need a few things. So, install the GUI. You want to have a screen GUI, call it whatever you want. Inside of here, you need the XP bar itself and the text label for your level. So in the text label, you can, you know, design it however you want. Uh, this isn't about it's actually designing the UI. So just make a text label, call it level. And in here, uh, the text doesn't really matter because you're going to change this. But this is uh, the level and it has to be a text label. And then here we need the XP bar itself, which is the black one the, for the background. And inside of that, you want to make sure it's inside of the background. You make another bar which will be the actual XP itself. I'll get into why it needs to be inside when I get to the scripting in here, when I get to scripting the actual bar itself. So I'll get, I'll get to this after the main part. So also uh, for the UI stuff inside of start play scripts, you want to have local script. I did forget to name this, so I'm just going to name it like uh, UI main. And in here, you'll just have all the GUI things. Uh, I'm going to show the server side of things first. I just called it data. It's a script and server script service. So open this up. Now I'll zoom in real quick. This is the server side. And it's also got a data store. So I'll, I'll explain all of this. So you need the service, data store service, of course, to save things. And another thing you need is inside of game settings, you want to go to security and enable studio access to API services. It says here, as you can see, if this is not enabled, uh, you won't be able to use data store. So make sure that's enabled. Uh, so yeah, we need that service. And then below it, here is the actual store. So we're just going to create a variable and we set it equal to data store service, get data store. And here's where you name your data store. So you can name it whatever you want here. In this case, it's just XP store because it's for like the leveling side of things, but it's up to you here. And we will call, uh, we'll basically like set, I guess we'll store a table inside of this data store specifically. And if we want to load or save any new data, we would go through the XP store. And as you can see here, you do get async key uh, for the XP store, which the XP store is this. So it will look through this data store and find the player. And then it would get the data for that player. But yeah, so when the player joins, game plays the player added connect function. Uh, that's just the classic thing you do for when a player joins on the server side. And the parameter would be the player, because that's the player that joined. Then we get the key from that, which would just be a string, you know, player underscore dot dot. This is concatenation. So you would just join up this string to the player dot user ID. So it will just make it equal to basically this and then whatever your user ID is. That's what it will do. So yeah, and then it will get your user ID and use user ID so it's like accurate because you know, this display names and stuff and 
names are a bit uh, iffy because you can change your name and things like that. So make sure it's user ID. Now here we use a pcool. So pcools are just uh, for pcools basically have like a success. So it checks if the set thing succeeded, and if it did, then it does x thing. So if it's a success, uh, and then data would just be equal to the thing that we return. So if it's a success, then we would return this into the data variable that we have here. So it creates this variable called data. And in the return here, we would return the XP store get async key into the data. So now data would be equal to this if it's a success. So if it can find the data, basically. Now, I'm actually. Yeah, no, this doesn't actually do the success part, but here, yeah, here it actually checks if it's a success. If it is a success and there is the data, then so on. But yeah, this just creates the pcool, I guess. It's like the template. Here we just have the simple uh, leader stats thing. If you don't want it to show in the top right, you could just make this a capital L. And now it won't show in the top right. When you do this though, make sure you remember to rename the things in the other scripts. Because for example, here, we are using lowercase l for the leader stats. So rename this to capital L, so you don't have any issues. But yeah, that's uh, if you don't want it to show. Right, so yeah, we just create a new folder inside of the player. Uh, actually, we could just do this. Create a new folder inside of the player, and we name it leader stats. Then we get the level, which is uh, an int value, because the level doesn't need to have any decimals. It will always go up by one or you know a set number and we'll set it to one as a base then we get the xp which is a number value number values can be decimals as well so that's why you use a number value uh, because this number will be like depending where you get the xp from uh, it could be a decimal you know and then the max xp also a number value depending on how you calculate the uh, xp increase per level you know, you can have like a multiplication, which would make this a decimal. For my one, it's just an increase of five. But you know, it's up to you. Here we do the success part of things. So if it's a success and there is data, then it will set the leader stats thing here. So we'll set the levels value to the data dot level, which would just be a table inside of the data here for the player, which would have the level. So it would set it equal to that. Or one has a base if it isn't that. It's just like a very, very extra precaution. And yeah, same thing for the other ones. And then here, all we do is if the current XP is changed. So this is what we do if a, a value is changed. We just do the value that you want to check and then dot change. So whenever this value changes, uh, it will fire all the code inside of it. And new V is just a new value for this value that changed. So if the new value is more than or equal to uh, the max XP's value, then it will proc the level increase. And here's the overtop. So this is basically just the extra XP on top of the level. So if you get like five XP and you have two and you need five, you would have two XP excess. So this would be what the overtop is. It would be two XP excess and it would carry over onto the next one. So this is just a print, you don't need to worry about that. But here we have the current XP dot value would be equal to the overtop, so two. And here we just increase the max XP's requirement by five. You know, here you can have your own logic, so it's up to you. And we also increase the level by one. Now, that's all done. Now when the player leaves, same thing, we get the key. Uh, we find the leader stats, which is just inside of the player. If there is a leader stats, which hopefully there should be, uh, it would create this table. This is the table of the things that we will put into this. So we'll create this table with the level, current XP, and maximum XP. And these uh, variables, I guess, will just be set to the leader stats current value for the things. And the reason we do this is because these values would have already been loaded. Uh, like the new updated ones from the data store would have already been set to the leader stats. So uh, we could just use these. Now we just do another p call, and uh, here is where we actually store the the data when we leave. So set async sets the current data to the data store. So the key is the player, 
So for the player, for that data store, it will set this data. And if it's not success, then fail to load data, so on. Yeah, that's the server side of things. And now the other one, which is just the local and you know, visual side of things. First things first, we need the twin servers. So as you saw there, it's like uh, smooth when this bar moves. So it's kind of smooth. Yep. And that's what twin servers will do down here. Then we need the player, local player, yep. Character is player.character or, or player.character added weight. Make sure you have this, very important. So we'll wait until the character is actually loaded before doing anything. Um, then we need the leader stats. So this is just you know, the same way of getting it. But we're going to use wait for child because in this case we're going to use it for the UI. And if there's no uh, leader stats, then the UI will all mess up. Then who would you get the player GUI, which is just inside of the player. And then on screen is just this. It's the screen GUI, which is inside of the player's GUI. And from here, we will just do on screen dot level dot text. And we would set that equal to level and then dot dot two strings. So another concatenation. And then we would put the lead of stats dot level dot value. So it would be equal to level dot dot two string. Two string just sets this variable, uh, this value, which is it a string. And it makes that into a string. So it will just join this up with this string. And we'll do the same thing for you. Uh, but in this case, we change the size of the bar uh, to a udem 2new udem 2 is for uh, X and Y. So we use udem 2 And here is where we set the values. Now, the reason we want to put the bar inside of the background is because inside of here, as you can see with the size, we have these numbers, which are, let me just change this to zero for the offset. And one for both of these so as you can see when you set this to one which would be equal to like the whole thing uh, it fills it out with the xp background as its max amount for example so for example on the xp background if i were to fill these both up to the max see it would go all the way to the actual end of the screen because it's using the screen as its base so the reason we put it inside is so that it uses the the background as, as its base and we can easily do the math with this to make it go down by a set amount. And it stays inside the actual background because the max value will just be one and the one would just be the full bar. So it works great. And the reason why there's like two values for each is because the first one is uh, the scale. The second one is the offset for the X and then here's the Y. So you are scale and you're offset. And we want to use scale. Scale is a lot better. So we just set the X of the bar equal to the current XP value divided by the maximum XP value, which gives us the number that would be like the percent of how much is filled up. So I actually do have it printing out uh, the XP progress amount on the side, but you know, you can play around with that yourself and see what all of that does. And then yeah, uh, just one so it's completely filled out. And then all we do here is we do another change thing. So whenever the level changes, we just change the level to the new value. It's simple. And we do another change to for the current XP. So when the current XP changes, we set the, well, this is just a variable for the XP progress, which is just the same thing that we have here, but in variable form. So you don't really need this. You can just put this inside of here. And then we just do a tween. So TS create. And then here is the inside of the brackets. We have the thing you want to tween. So it's the bar itself that we want to tween. Then we do a tween info dot new. And inside of the brackets here, we put the tweens info. So the first thing that we put in here is the duration of it. How long you want the tween to last. 0.2 seconds, you know, changes to whatever you want. And you can have more things after this, like easing styles and things like that, but I'm not going to add those. So you can look up a, have another video for that, which explains tween service like fully. But after this, we're just going to have a comma. And here's the thing that we're going to tween 
for this object. So for this bar, what are we gonna tween in the curly brackets? Let me zoom in in case you can't see that that's curly bracket. There we go. So in the curly bracket, we just put the size because that's what we're gonna change. Size. And you didn't toot on you, same thing as before. And because it's a tween, you want to make sure it's colon play. So it actually plays. And don't forget this bracket here in case you maybe deleted it or something. Now, yeah. Um, and yeah, as you can see here, it's got like the XP progress, which is like the difference between them. So it's 0.2 and you can kind of assume that this is around 0.2. So yeah, it works great. If I press it again, now it's at uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.7 of the bar being filled. So yeah, does this drop great.